Once I start, it's real and it's scary to think I may fail and go into the unknown again. It's been three years since I've graduated and I don't know where to start. It feels like I have no time. Starting makes me feel like I need to tackle everything at once and it's super intimidating. I've rescheduled the MCAT consistently for three years, so I'm scared to start again. Where to start, resource overload, the amount of content. I'm scared to just start. Hey, I'm Maggie. I'm a third year medical student and I got a 516 on the MCAT. So I pulled you guys on Instagram and asked what your biggest hurdles were when it came to the MCAT. And I was actually really surprised to hear how being scared to start was one of the most common struggles. Don't get me wrong, I was terrified of the MCAT because I heard so many stories of people studying for months and totally bombing it on the real thing. But I think I let that fear become motivation for me to just dive headfirst into my studying and never look back. So in this video, I want to break down exactly what I did to feel confident and ready to tackle the beast that is the MCAT so you can turn your fear of getting started into full focus mode and crush it on test day. This is episode one of seven of my getting started MCAT series. So once you have your mind right and nothing but confidence about getting started on your MCAT journey, be sure to watch the rest of the videos so I can help you eliminate the overwhelm of choosing what resources to use and figuring out where exactly to start. Let's start by talking about what the MCAT is. So on test day, you're gonna have four sections, chem phys, cars, bio, biochem, and then psych soc. It's over seven hours long, including breaks. So this is why students get immediately intimidated and scared and overwhelmed when they're thinking about how the heck do I study for a test that's that long and has that much material. But step one is the elephant mindset. So how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. This is all about changing your perspective to relinquish the power that the MCAT has over you as this intimidating, daunting, and impossible thing to overcome because it's simply not. Instead of thinking, how will I get through all that content? You're gonna think about what you need to do each day because that is a million times more manageable. You've heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant like one bite at a time? We are going to live by that principle. So how would you get through all of that content? You buy a set of content review books and you read one to five chapters a day period that's it and each day all you have to wake up and do is read a few chapters that is completely manageable and eventually you're going to have gotten through all of the chapters there's your content review phase and then for the next phase of your studying you're going to buy a question bank it's going to have over 3,000 practice problems and you're again going to start doubting yourself and think how the heck am i going to get through all these questions but instead of thinking that you're just going to think about the day to day wake up do 40 maybe 60 questions a day and eventually you're going to get through 90 plus percent of that question bank and you just focus on one day at a time. Step two is to make a realistic timeline. So Maggie, what's a realistic timeline? Glad you asked. So I think three months is a really great place to start and there's various reasons why you might want to add to that. I made a scoring system, this is completely arbitrary, but if you want to follow along using the scoring system to help you determine how many months you should study for the MCAT, then feel free to use that. Here is how you would score yourself and use the points. And then if you score seven to 10 points, three months might be perfect for you. If you score five to seven points, four to five months might be perfect. And then if you score five or less points, you might want to consider studying for six to nine months. So let's get into to the examples, we're gonna start off with two reasons why a three month study timeline might be perfect for you. So reason number one, you have so much time, minimal commitments, and you can make studying for the MCAT like your full-time job, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week kind of thing. So you've taken all of the recommended courses. These are the recommended courses from AAMC. So all of those courses may or may not be fresh in your mind, but again, you have plenty of eight hour study days to where you can get plenty of study done in three months and it's completely realistic for you. Reason number two is you have a really, really solid foundation. So you have taken all of those recommended classes, you ace them, it is fresh in your mind, you feel really strong about this content and so you're not gonna be spending that much time on content review. So you might not have a ton of eight hour study days, maybe you're a junior and you're juggling a glass load, but you have such a strong foundation that you're still able to study in that three month time frame and get the score that you would like despite having other commitments. Now, if you are in college, there's kind of two different places that people fit in the MCAT. One, students might have taken these recommended courses by freshman and sophomore year, so they will take it, they'll be ready to take it the summer after sophomore year. If you don't take it that summer, then junior year is kind of the next place that people fit in the MCAT. And again, we talked about juggling it with classes. People have definitely done that before. It's realistic, especially if you have that strong foundation, but junior year would be the next 
best time to take it. If you're not taking any gap years, then the summer after junior year isn't ideal. Like if you start studying in June and June, July, August, you take it end of August. Like if you're also applying that cycle, that's really, really late. So that would be a great option if you're taking a gap year, but not if you're trying to apply that cycle, go to med school straight out of college and you're not taking it until August after your junior year. That's not ideal. Great times are summer after sophomore year or during your junior year. And if you're doing it during your junior year, you can take advantage of winter breaks where you have like two plus weeks off for winter break and then you also have Thanksgiving break in there. So if you're studying around that time frame, of course, there's also finals to consider. So maybe if you are planning ahead, try to take a lighter course load when you know you're going to be studying for the MCAT. Now let's cover three reasons why you might want to take four to five months to study for the MCAT. This is the category that I fell under. So reason number one is that you haven't taken one of the science classes that are recommended and you need more time for content review to basically self-study that section. And we're talking like OCHEM, physics, not psych social because that's relatively easy compared to the rest. But if you haven't taken OCHEM, you definitely want to give yourself extra time to self-study that section. I think one hard science class is pretty reasonable to self-study. Reason number two, this was me. So so you do have other commitments and you're not able to do like a full-time study schedule for three months straight, but you're able to do like a 75% full-time study schedule because those commitments are pretty flexible. So for me, I was working as an EMT. I had 12 hour shifts. So I either worked three or four shifts per week, which meant I could study full eight hour days, three to four times a week. Also, like I said, very flexible. So I was able to like, people wanted to pick up shifts to get overtime or make extra money. So that fourth shift a week, I often was posting in the Facebook group and people would take it for me. So I had more weeks where I could study four days a week, full eight hour days. So like, yeah, I was working full time as an EMT, but because it was flexible, I was able to study in five months and that worked perfect for me. Reason number three is that you graduated a few years ago. So you've taken recommended classes, but it's been years and it's really not fresh in your mind. And you're worried about kind of relearning all of that material, but you have plenty of time to study for the MCAT. So you have a lot of those eight hour study days to really make MCAT your full focus for this four to five months, but you need the extra time because that foundation is a bit weak. This is like for non-trads who realistically probably have like a full-time job and can't just study 40 hours a week, but like, I don't know, there's probably somebody out there where this like fall there would be in this category. Maybe you can like do part-time for a temporary amount of time and your job is flexible in that way. So realistically, there's probably not many people in this category, but on to the next. <laughs> Lastly, let's cover a couple reasons why you might need six to nine months to study for the MCAT. So top thing that comes to my mind is if you have a very non-flexible eight to five job, you cannot go part-time, you cannot give people your shifts, um, you have a commute and MCAT is more like your part-time focus, maybe not even like 20 hours a week, you're able to fit in. So this is a good case where you might, might want six to nine months just to give yourself plenty of time to still re do really well on the MCAT. Then reason number two is back to that person who graduated a few years ago, but in this case has other commitments to where again, MCAT is part time in their life and they need that extra time to study, but then they don't, they aren't able to study full time. So you just want to make sure that you have plenty of time to relearn the material if that's what you feel like you need. And since you don't have a lot of time in the week to study for the MCAT, you want to extend it for that as well. Step three is the single most important thing I did to be successful on the MCAT. Didn't even know I was doing it at the time, but looking back now, I realized that this is the thing that motivated me every day and why I didn't struggle with consistency. So step three is finding your why. So Fantastic. You chose a timeline. You know when you're going to take the MCAT. You know how long you're going to study for it. But how do you wake up every day and actually have the motivation to do the thing? You don't. You do not wake up with the motivation to read five chapters in your content review books or to get through 60 to 100 practice questions. What you do is you wake up and think of why you're doing this in the first place. Because doing well on the MCAT is not the end goal. Becoming a doctor is the end goal. And there is a reason why you want to be a doctor because otherwise you could turn off this video never think about the MCAT again, figure out something else to do with your pre-med degree, go become like a chemical research assistant or something, or go into biomedical engineering. Like you don't have to put yourself through this. You could just decide right now to not take the MCAT and do something else with your life. But I have a feeling that's not what you want to do because there is some compelling, strong, innate desire that you have to become a doctor or you wouldn't put yourself through the MCAT and applying to medical schools. And maybe you didn't get in the first time, so you're going to try again and all of this money that it costs. So I want you to think about the reasons why you want to be a doctor, write it down, put it on your wall with your goal score. And that is what is going to motivate you every single day. This is what I did. I had a piece of paper and I never went into the room and was like, I don't feel like studying today. I was like, this 
this is the thing that I need to do in this season of my life to reach my dream of becoming a doctor. That's pretty dang motivating compared to, oh my God, I have to wake up and do 60 questions today. Like, of course you're not gonna be consistent if that's what you're thinking. And fascinatingly, is that a word? I don't know. But the book, The 12 Week Year, explains why this is actually like so strong. That's what I mentioned. I was like, I didn't know I was doing it at the time, but now looking back, it makes sense. Because this book explains, and I'm probably not gonna do the best summary, but it explains how our prefrontal cortex literally lights up when we think about a compelling future, when we have a vision, when we have a why to what we're doing versus the amygdala is the one that fires when we're thinking of uncertainty and risk. So think of it like this is how I dumb it down in my brain. If you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get through this content. How I do this? I feel like I'm going to fail. Bam, amygdala firing off. And then it's going to shut you down before you even get started. So that's what's happening when you're waking up, thinking all those negative thoughts, doubting yourself and then not doing the thing. And you're never consistent and you fall completely fall through your study plan and timeline that you decided to do versus waking up and being like god i want to be a doctor so bad i like can't imagine not taking this test because this is the last thing hurdle i have to overcome in order to be able to submit my applications and i want to be a doctor so bad because xyz in my life happened then your prefrontal cortex is firing off and the book explains that the neurons that fire off when we are thinking of a compelling future are the same neurons that are firing when we're doing the thing, like acting on the thing we need to do for that compelling future. And then he explains with neuroplasticity and how our brains can change and strengthen and develop over time. The more you think about that compelling future, the more you're strengthening your brain to act on it. So the more you think about it, the more consistent you get, like you get the motivation to actually act on it. You focus on that vision and your why and why you're doing this in the first place. And our brain becomes stronger and more able to do the thing every day. That is how you crack the code of consistency and crushing the MCAT instead of focusing on the negative and doubting yourself constantly and shutting it all down before you ever even get the chance to get started. I hope you are so pumped now to tackle the MCAT and you have so much more confidence in yourself because you deserve it. You've done th hard things in the past and this is just another hard thing that you're going to do amazing on. So next steps, what I want you to do, download our free PDF, print it out, and then write down why you wanna be a doctor in your goal score and then post that on your wall. And that's gonna be every time, instead of doubting yourself, you're gonna look at that picture and remind yourself to think of why you're doing this in the first place. Step two, this is an entire series. So if you don't know what resources to use, go ahead and watch the next video on the series and I'll talk all about what resources to use when studying for the MCAT.